Mate, you've been class since you've managed to get the jersey. You were left out for a while. I, I actually saw something where you're quite vocal about being left out. You felt like you should have been. I love that. I, I think as a player, you can see where you are in the pecking order. You know what your output is in games. You know where you are. You were getting man of the match. It's not that getting man of the match is because it's from yeah. one commentator yeah, yeah. that gives you that. But let's go back a little bit through that. Like How frustrating is a young man coming through? There was almost like this Alex Goode about a young Ben Earl. Like, is he going to get in or is he just going to be this standout yeah. player in the Prem that everyone's talking about, which will then piss off the coach because everyone's yeah. talking about him. He's getting asked about Ben Earl or why is Alex Goode not in? Why is he yeah. not in? It's always like, and there's that sense behind them that's like, you know what? Fuck the media. I ain't picking yeah. Ben Earl. How yeah. was it with Eddie? It just seems like he just didn't like you. Was that the case? Well, I think... I think I, I, firstly, Eddie gave me my debut. Like I had an amazing time in the first three years of my international career. Obviously, the big thing was that I never started a game, and that was by the end that was wearing on me quite a bit. And that was I, wrongly or rightly, I, I, I don't, I never really voiced my concerns, but kind of, I think he thought I was happy maybe sitting on the bench and you know picking up caps and and whatever. And then he decided to go a different direction at the end of my time at Bristol. And where you were brilliant, yeah. As well, well like Bristol that, was probably yeah. your best rugby. Which, yeah, it was where we were, we, and we were playing in a good team, and you know, it was a, it was a, it was a weird time. And, and then, yeah, I came back to Saris and and was kind of not really worried about international rugby. I wanted to be back at the club and was enjoying it. And then, like you say, like I felt like I was playing well, but w one wasn't getting picked and, and wasn't wasn't getting spoken to as well, which I think was was as much as a frustration. If if I was not getting picked and not being spoken to, then you know, then if sorry, if I was getting picked, not getting picked, and being spoken to, why I wasn't, then I probably could make peace with that. Um, I just wasn't being told anything, and, and I and I never really said, I never outwardly said, can't believe I'm not getting picked. I was just saying how disappointed I was. I was, I having played when you play for England, and have it taken away from you it is gut wrenching, and it kind of you have to reevaluate what your why is playing the sport because you, everyone wants to play for the nation, um, and yeah, it was really hard. And then to come back, you know, we're under Steve. Um, in a new new regime was brilliant and, and and my appreciation for playing for England is is sky high I, I love it I think it's it's the pinnacle of anyone's career and and uh, you know I'm, they're the best memories of my career yeah it looks like you enjoy it especially with the, the whooping and hollering and stuff like that <laughs> which I enjoy and again I'm yeah. gonna stick up for you on this but I know what that is I know what that yeah. means in terms of individuals doing that. Do you want to share why you do that? I, I've got a reason yeah. why I used to do it. Yeah, I think I think firstly, I, I the people I grew up, uh, you know, loving, taking inspiration from, all did it, and I thought it was a really crucial part of what Saracens were when we were our most successful. Um, so I probably took it out of that, but personally, for me, it's a really good way of me keeping myself engaged in games. Um, you know that. Rugby is, I think, a, a hard game of rugby nowadays. Is about thirty-seven minutes. So There's about thirty-seven minutes of effort, and the rest is rest is rest time. Ball's not in the play, so you know moments like that keep me engaged. If a scrum, we get a scrum penalty. I'm obviously not in the middle of a scrum, so I'm not like blowing out of my ass. I can really get the boys up for this. I can enjoy the victories, um, and I think on the same side, it's what it can do for the opposition. Um, if an opposition sees me, we've had a long defensive set. We get a turnover and we're celebrating, it just shows that we've got so much more in us. And we do. And, you know, obviously boys are hands on head, hands on knees on the floor, gasping for air. If I'm showing others that I'm I'm ready to go, I'm showing the opposition I'm ready to go, that can only be a good thing for the team. And and I've said to a few people that have asked me about it, I will, I'll will continue to do it. And if someone goes to me, Bennett, re I really don't like it. It really off puts me. And that's a player, a, a teammate. I'll stop in a heartbeat and that's fine. But until that point, I'll continue to do it. Yeah, and that's what I said when people ask about it. And it became more glaringly obvious as England were more under yeah. the scrutiny yeah, exactly. of the game yeah. plan and the way that they were playing. So celebrating the small wins. And that's what I would say. I would say as a player, it engages you in the moment. It almost like energises you. Yeah. And sometimes you're doing it for yourself. It's like mm. a self-talk. It's definitely. And I used to play like that. I used to talk and speak and not that anyone would be listening to it. Mm. I'd be doing it for myself. Yeah and trying to find them small moments. And like for the people that have never been in a scrum, right, and you're pushing to the cow sheds and back, exactly. and someone's trying to push your ass through your mouth and vice versa when yeah. I'm going through a prop, and you get the celebration of yeah, it's your players coming in, it's a collective. And then on the flip side of that, and you've just been hosed in the scrum and you hear everyone yeah, it's, jeering. It's like there's a big, yeah. yeah, there's a psychological yeah. 
Well, a big, a big, a big problem for mine when I was younger and we talk about growing up as a player was like, I would be very consistent in games. I'd have like an amazing five minutes and then I wouldn't touch the ball for 10 minutes or I wouldn't make a tackle or my body language would be poor. I just found it was a really good way. I remember speaking to Al about it, Al Sanderson, when he was, when he was at Saris was, you know, was, we were find, trying to find ways of keeping me engaged in moments so that I was staying, you know, and switched on. And like you say, it's not, it's not for long. It's for 37 minutes. I'd, you do two hour exams at school nowadays, which is just bonkers. So like... You know, it was, and that we came up with that was a way of, of really engaging me. I remember training with a cup with a mic on a couple of times and reviewing what I was saying to others and how I was talking to myself, and and again, that's kind of the result I came up with. Yeah, that's cool. So you're micing yourself up as I well. I did when when Al was when Al was there. We used to mic myself up for training and 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 like listen to what I was saying and um and obviously like that does make you more outgoing. It does make you want to say it. But then, like I found that I'd get to end of sessions and be like. Wow, I felt like I've I've fully engaged in every moment. Did I make the right decision every time? No, but was I engaged? Yes. Mm. Um, which I, you know, and and it's probably a, a a bit of a work on for a lot of young players is because you come from a system where you're a school or club and you're you're the best player and you don't you you can kind of get the ball when you want, make the tackles when you want, and and it goes well. And then you come to a you're then a small fish in a very big pond, which is professional rugby. You come into Saris and. You've got to try and find your find your niche again. It's a tough it's a tough lesson to learn. Yeah. How old are you now, Ben? Twenty five. A lot's happened. It's a long. Uh, yeah. I, I say a lot's happened. You think about your career and, and the ups and downs of being in and out of the England setup. Yeah. The stuff at Saracens, going to Bristol. Yeah. How, how important do you think that Bristol time was to have a break from Saracens with everything that was was going in terms of growing up yeah. in a different environment, seeing the way they do things. I mean, it, it, it's an interesting story because I remember we were. I'd just been picked. I just had my first selection for for England, and uh, we were in um, we were in Portugal in Browns, and we always used to go there. And, and Eddie took us all all the Saris players into his his room or his meeting room, and we were all sitting in a, around a circle. And he's he was like pointing to all the boys. You can stay. You can stay. You can stay. And then he came to me, and I was actually the last one. He said, "You you're gonna probably gonna have to go and play in the Premiership." And so all of a sudden, I'm like, "Gosh, that like you know like obviously I want to stick around. I love the club." Um, so it came from him. <clears throat> well, he was the one that was saying you'd have to go, but you know, if you want to stay, then you know, then you're kind of it's a roll of, roll of the dice whether you'll play for England whilst you're there. Um, I then we came back from the Six Nations. And... Sorry, but it was just simple as that. <coughs> so you're in a room in Portugal, yeah, and he's just got you, and he's been like, right, you can stay, Billy, yeah, Owen, yeah. Owen, Maro, Jamie, Jamie, Elliot, and um, and then yeah, then I Were was you like, the only one. Uh, I'm trying Max to remember well. now. Max wasn't in the camp at the time. Um, no, yeah, I, I might have been the only one. I can't. Re- oh, Jack Singleton was there as well. So okay. Jack Singleton was told he'd, he'd have to go as well. Anyway, we we had these meetings and and Brendan Vence was there and, and Mark and Phil, and I'd come in with a bit of like a pretty thing. And I was like, I'm gonna try and say this in the right way, but I I think it'd be the best for me with my international international aspirations and for my development as a player that I try and not make it all about playing for England. Anyway, in fairness to them, they front footed it and was like, Ben, we feel that we feel you need to go and keep playing the Premiership. You've been brilliant for us, but you know, we want you to go as a young player and come back as a as a seasoned professional. And so it was then like, well, what club what club's gonna work? And um a lot of clubs obviously having the opportunity to have young players coming through that they, they were quite keen. At it, the salary cap stuff, they were it was all gonna go on to Saris and stuff, so it wasn't actually a burden for the club. And there was a few clubs floated around and, and we ended up at Bristol and then Max ended up and, and we both went down in the middle of lockdown. That was a, that was our first time. Um, and, and we loved it. It was very different. Um, the city's brilliant. I love Bristol. Love love the city. Um, and the players, obviously, some of the players we got to play with were amazing. In terms of what it did for me, firstly, it gave me such clarity that I loved Saris. I, I like I, that was the, yeah. that was the club I wanted to be at. Now, obviously, Bristol was amazing. We had amazing memories. We had an amazing team. I I made some mates for life there, but it reaffirmed to me how much I loved being. That was like my club. Um, and actually, funny enough, my first game for Bristol was against Saris, and my first game back at Saris was against Bristol. Mm. So, I've had it both ways. Um, and the second thing it did for me is that like it taught me how to keep backing up games like when I was playing at Saris just before I left at Bristol I was starting to get into the team but like not regularly again um but it I I left never never having played for England I came back having played 13 times for England and played 40 times for Bristol and you know those 40 games for, for me were 
were invaluable and I came back you know like like Smalley wanted a bit more of a seasoned professional a bit more of a leader and and yeah it was like I said it was a great it was a great thing for my career and it was great for me that I came back knowing that Sarries was my place whereas other people might have come back and said oh I, I did enjoy Bristol like it would be quite good to go back there or another club 